Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, I got contacted by a uh, fellow subscriber, YouTuber, that uh, went and did a pick, and in his pick he grabbed this two wheel with all its attachments in the back there. And while he was there buying that purchase, next to it was this little scooter. And uh, you want to tell the story possibly of how you came about it? We were looking for the other parts to the, to the Gravely and uh, we lifted up the top, which had a Model T under it in pieces. And he didn't see anything, so I looked and I saw the handlebars. I said, oh, you got a mini bike. He said, oh no, it's not a mini bike, it's a scooter. And he pulled it out. First I thought it was a Cushman, which had me all excited. And then I saw it wasn't a Cushman, which I was less excited. And then he said to you, what? You want it? Yep. And then you contacted me and said, do you want it? Yep. <laughs> and that works out awesome. So what's cool about this though, is you're looking at it, it folds up into a suitcase. This whole thing, the handlebars come off, they get tucked in, this bar comes out, and then the whole wheel assembly folds down over into it. You flip it back, it's got a handle strap that goes on it. And I think it was for like airplanes, like you had a small airplane, you wanted something to go put around on, and or like a boat. So we're gonna go bring this back to the garage. I do appreciate uh, Dan hooking me up with this and we're gonna go see if we can go bring it back to life. What do you have the little- uh... That was there, but I touched it and it fell apart. Well, oh, that's cool. So all the instructions of how to go. Yeah. Cool, I'll probably be able to eliminate that and put it right back on there again. Probably. That is awesome. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. No problem. Hey, let's go load that puppy up. I just want to add it to this a little bit that he, you said the the guy or kid, you called him a kid, but well, he's, he's younger than me. He was like 50s. It's hard to tell. We're all wearing masks. <laughs> uh, he never saw this running and it was been there in his parents' house, was it? His, yeah, his, yeah, his parents' house. Since he was a kid and it, it never ran that whole time that he could remember. Or, so. or hadn't run it all very long. He said, he, said it, he thinks it never ran. Okay. Or, or it's like new. I, I had the feeling he thought it was you know brand new but so i would say 40 years then it's probably yeah. then 50s that yeah, would put them it. yeah you know 10 12 years old or so that it hasn't oh it's run at one time at yeah one time it looks well the plastic got thrashed some fashion so we're gonna go call it 40 years that hasn't run it how's that it sounds like a plan sure. we'll, we'll, we'll go with that an average yeah. Got her up on the lift, we get a better idea what we have and, and what we need. So the plastics are pretty beat up, is the first thing I see. Front fender's got a chunk missing out of it. Running board's cracked and broken away. This is, I mean, what do you want to call it? A fender, maybe? A skirt? It's a missing a corner, a hunk taken out of there, a crack there. And the biggest issue is the other side. And the back's got some hammering to it too. It's just literally missing pieces of it. Uh, I did a quick look on eBay and nothing it, other than a couple of like stickers that say the name. How would you pronounce that? Centaur? Really not much comes up on them. I think I had it right the first time. There you go. Engine is a, is it a Clinton? I believe so. Missing the rope for the pull start. Yeah. It looks like the cylinder and engine are pretty packed with mouse crap. I think it's 50 cc's. It's tiny. I wonder if I could register it as a moped. It's supposed to be street legal. <laughs> Missing a headlight. I think there's supposed to be a headlight on it. Handlebars are kind of funky too, like they're almost facing the wrong way. Maybe they're adjustable. Yeah, they're just adjustable. Tweaked a little on too far out. So the idea, the wing, the nut here, you undo. The steering front end comes right out of it. Then you undo this rod. And I, th I think you'll fold the handlebars in, I'm not sure. Then this whole assembly swings up and over 
back into itself. And that's getting way ahead of ourselves, but that's the idea. And then you're supposed to be able to carry the thing like a suitcase with, I think, that as your... There were mainly men back there, because I think it's about 90 pounds <laughs> going through the airport with that. Pardon me, it's my carry-on. <laughs> All right, let's go get some side covers off of it and see if we get that out of the way or the whole, maybe this the whole back skin gets out of the way. We start seeing what we got for an engine. Our goal is to get this thing to run. I see a couple of uh, rivets, but I see one regular screw. Let's start with that. That was easy. Hey, <laughs> we're in. That's just why I patched it already once before. This side's missing a screw all together. Let just come right off. You know that front rivet? It's got a, a clip on it. Yeah, that one's pretty... Looks like a cover from a, one of those Tupperware storage containers. Question is, does it turn? It does turn. Nice. Wanting to bet it doesn't have spark though. <laughs> uh, let's go. Oof. Go take a peek up in there. Yeah, I see that fuel. Turned back into dinosaur dust a long time ago. I don't see any. I don't see that's like completely rotted out. Until we get it off of there, it's kind of hard to tell though, huh? Nice setup if you uh, you smash into something. The rod goes right into the center of the gas tank. <laughs> this is a, a year. I'll get you over there instead. You read that? I don't see a D on that neither. That might be a D right there. I think he said it's a 61. I'm not sure where he got that information from. Go check out the other side. Let me pop in a stand. I see what we got on this side. That might be usable for a mile or two. This is there to get the size, right? Do some wiring to wiring to nothing. It's got a CVT trans, meaning uh, this pulley, as the motor revs up and speeds up, it's got weights on the inside of it that want to squeeze these two halves together. I doubt it's going to move now. Squeezes these two halves together, so at an idle, at slow speed, the belt is just riding right here. Yeah, and then as it warms up or speeds up, rather. Then the belt will travel on this outer loop and that would take up the tension between the difference right there and it just becomes an automatic transmission for lack of better terms a lot of times the other side has an adjustable one too but this again is 1961. uh i don't know what you want to do let's go get the pull start off the other side we should probably start looking at that pull the plug out of it throw some oil in it maybe give her a couple of spins give her a list and see what uh, what it sounds like check it out I'm looking on the back it's actually got suspension this inner this is the frame and this inner swing arm and the engine rocks up and down all together that guy's a tad on the bent side but I don't know what the lever does change the the spring rate of it yeah that cylinder is pooch though it's got a, a kick up to it I'm willing to bet other than the spark plug, nothing is metric. <laughs> what do you want to call that? Three AC thing? Oh. 
Doesn't even have one on the bottom. Someone's been in here before us. Hopefully the guts are all there. Yeah. Good. Let's Get the crunchy plug out of it. Shoot a little bit of oil down there. Looks okay. A little carboned up on the inside. I get some light machine oil. Let's give that a for a little a thorough splash. A little clanky. <laughs> may or may not be an issue. All right, we got one, two, Get these three out, get the pull star off of it. Pull start, the uh, fan shroud off of it and see how that does. So I'm looking at that rear shotgun trying to figure out what that lever was for and I figured it out. You flip this whole bracket up over this way and it tucks the rear wheel up inside as it does turn into a suitcase. So the wheel probably tucks up and that way it can sit flat. If not, it would just kind of want to tip over, wouldn't it? So, again, not sure what's going on with that bend right there. It might be, maybe it's supposed to be there. Maybe, maybe not. Not sure if there's any more hidden. I got three out. Those are spacers. That's what I put on there. Maybe it comes that way. And it's just not sticking on there. I'm going to go set up a drill. We're going to shove a spark plug in it. I highly doubt it. We're going to go check for spark. <laughs> Surprise bunch. Not a bunch of mouse nests in it. For once. All right. Let's see over under. I'm going to give it 5% chance. And is there a kill switch on this anywhere? I just see some disconnected wires. There's two disconnected wires here. That's what we get. No wonder. No spark. <laughs> Let's get this off. See if we get the magneto off. And I'm sure there's points in there that have a nice blue-green fungus growing on them. Probably going to need a puller. Let's give it a couple of wax, a little bit of back pressure on it, and sometimes it'll pop. Bunch of crap's falling out of it. Yeah. Let's go see if we can get a puller set up on those two and push on the center and get her, get her to pop off. That should do it. Gonna be inside there. I'm getting an air gun. Let's go blow this crap off of here. Let's 
see if we get that bale off of there. I'm quite sure it's the top or the bottom that has to come off. There it is. What's that in there? And there's our points. They kind of move and stay there. <laughs> I think uh, that might be an issue. <laughs> yeah, the center pivot is corroded, and the points themselves are really bad too. Oof. Let's see if we get some better light on there. They are like mushroomed over. I need a pick. Ready. That will definitely not be good for spark. I wonder if we can just get them right out of there, maybe clean them up. Because this pivot point right here too needs to be done because right now it's supposed to be like that, but they're just kind of opening and staying. I'm sure we could work it, but let's so that's gonna take out the back section, but for this one, looks like it's got, you take those two nuts loose and that'll loosen up this tension on this spring plate. I think it's all gotta get cleaned up anyway. I think all those contacts are kind of corroded. It's loosened that double set up there. I bet you, you know what? It probably just slides right out. This whole section right here slides right out of the body. All right, we'll grab, you think it's three ace? Nope. 11, 30 seconds we'll go with. Yeah. I do not want to break anything. Because I do not have anything to fix it with. So one of them, one of those two coils that are on there, you can't see the bottom, you can see the top one. Actually, you can't see the bottom one. I say one of them is probably for lighting and one of them is for making spark. I would guess it's probably six volt for the uh, electrical system. I think I got some old lights I could probably use. I, I think I have some, uh, they're lights from like an old emergency exit sign. Has the Kind of gray metallic look. Do you think we need to crack that loose? Or you think it's going to just slide out? And the cover was holding it. Yeah, that's cool. It's not moving much. There it goes. that game operation hopefully it doesn't buzz me there we go get that part out 
probably take the whole assembly out. Watch it take that post with it. It might, that might be part of it. Yeah. <laughs> all I had to do was take the screw out. That's all right. You need to be cleaned up anyway. I'm gonna go take a minute and clean those surfaces up. Yeah, they weren't very clean, no were they? Yeah, there's that pivot too, that pivot's all conjunctified. Is that a word? We'll clean that up, put them back on. I'd give it a gap probably about 16 thou. We'll see if it gets any spark. Check this out. The cam lobe is also removable. Good, we can go clean that surface up. Should remember which side is out because it might be a different, yeah. Okay, so. I would call that seven o'clock, 6.30, seven o'clock is where the lobe is in case I screw it up because that's all to do with the timing. We'll clean that up, we'll put all that back together. This little handy dandy tool. Holds on to the screw. Is that the correct one? Yes it is. We gotta spin that camera around so it's at top dead center. The lobe. There. We want that gap. We're gonna eyeball it. We're gonna eyeball it at 16. That's 20. As long as it closes, it does. Come on, get back up. Get over the hill. And I still have that a little bit on the much side. We'll grab a feeler gauge. Where do you think I'm at? Think I got it? I am gonna say that is 20. I'm thinking I'm gonna be on the large side. Not that I'm bragging or anything. Let's see. Yeah, that's 20. That's a loose 20. Yeah, she's been around. You know, I was just going to try to get just a little more and I overshot it. Ah. Grab a 16 that we're looking for anyway. I want to make sure that the feeler gauge is pretty clean. There's points in oil. So 20 wasn't making it. 16 is loose. It's just a little, a little notch in top that I can wedge the screwdriver against. Come on, come on, go, go. Can I tighten it? I tighten it. <laughs> come on. I play this game all day over. There's stuff to start.
see what it does when I tighten it. I call it an 18. A snug 18. All right, I'm gonna go put all these pieces back together, put the wires back on it, put the magneto on it, and we'll spin it over. See if it makes spock. Or I forget though, we need to put a little bit of grease right on that little wiper pad. And that will keep the point, the um, Bakelite, whatever it is, or plastic on the points from burning up. And that doesn't work. Just a little something. Good enough. So I'm putting it back together. I'm like, what's that writing on there? A couple of you were yelling at me already. It says, <laughs> the light gets on it, right? There you go. Set points to 20,000, and the bottom of it is a feeler gauge. <laughs> One does never cease. Oh, uh, let's, I gotta run that screw in there. I'll turn that light off. Something else, oh, my drill. <laughs> like, where's the light coming from? Let's go see if that worked for us. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna go pop the air cleaner off. I'm gonna try to feed a little bit of oil down through the carb just for the bottom end a little bit. Then we'll squirt a little bit of fuel in the plug hole and see if she fires. Yeah, two stroke oil on a two stroke. There's no oil in the crankcase, is what lubricates the bottom end. And the sonar wall, so we can work our way all the way in there. Got a nice little dosage. I'm gonna throw the impact on that, get that nut a little tighter, but all that kind of squish around in there. It needs a little bit of RPM for it to, to splash and stick to that stuff anyway. But at least something's in there. Let's give her a little, it might be a little too much. <laughs> Hopefully, it kicks the mouse out the muffler. <laughs> Muffle alarm. Oh. So close. Actually, yeah, I want to go. All right. Loser. <laughs> Good little check for spark again. I fouled the plug out too much. It bridged the gap on the end of the plug so it had no spark. Plus all the oil I shot in there too. But Let's, um, I'm going to spin it, clear it. I'm going to go clean up that plug, dry it up, and we'll shoot some more fuel in it, try it again. It, it caught for a second. Round two. Probably gave it a little too much too. That was a, a tiny, it is only 49 cc's. That doesn't work, but we'll, we'll try putting some in through the carb to the bottom end.
But I think we still have a spark issue. I have a boat plug in there. I tried a couple of plugs. I just watched it and kind of spun it for a little while. Boat plug's flat on top. There's no, there's no recess. I don't know if it shows, it's very erratic. And sometimes the camera doesn't pick it up. It fires, doesn't fire, fires, doesn't fire. Oops, sorry, kicked you in the foot. And that's kind of like what it was doing. Let's go try that one in there. And if it kind of goes pop, and then skips, pop, skips. And that's what's going on. And unfortunately, I don't have any tune-up parts for it. We could, we could probably just you know, shove some kind of condenser in there, but. Let's see what we get. How's it Because it's got compression. It should, it should fire. And again, it, it had... <laughs> It had um, an issue. You know, they said it never ran, so we may be chasing the original problem. I have to grind the. And one more. A little. It should rev for about. Four seconds and die. Should. Yeah, it's just not having it. Let's go wide open. Go big, go home. Come on, Joe. The drill shuts off. Do you ever have a tool that you hate? You look at that meter, it's saying 1.82. Open it up, do it again. Not really giving you nine. I'm gonna go get different capacities. Now I don't know what value that is supposed to have, what number it is. We get a couple of different capacitors, go throw them in there. Right to 260. Right? No floating, no BS. Right to 260. Let's go try another one. Try this one. Two sixteen, two seventeen. Right two sixteen. Two set. So I'm I'm touching the edge of that, so it was wrong. There we go. Yeah. So they repeat themselves very very well. This one, on the other hand, is having none of that. It's pretty much just open. It it's, doesn't have any capacitance to it whatsoever. So, we have a back condenser. I do not have one. Is that physical shape? I was thinking like a Honda motorcycle is similar to that diameter, but I do not have any of those. So I'm just going to go try. This is a marine one. Just gonna, we're going to go hook this up. I think it's. Yeah, it has to be tucked underneath. I'm going to go try to figure out a way to pack all this stuff underneath that flywheel and uh, see if we can go get it to uh, do what it's doing. I'm looking up there. You're not paying attention. <laughs> I want to see if I can get it somewhere. It, it mounts back inside here. So let me see if I can modify this and try to get this to go possibly 
you can get that to screw into place by actually just grind that right off. That that was probably for points to touch on. Maybe we can grind that out of there. Still have it work. Get it tuck in there, hook that up, see if it'll come back to life for us. Well, it's gonna be close. I think it's gonna fit. So I'll give that a shot, see what we get. I got the new condenser in there. See if that looks any better for us. I'm liking that a lot better. Yes, yes I am. <laughs> Let's go give her a little bit of that. See if that made a little difference for us. Let's back you up. You won't get nothing in your eye. Enough. It's me not being tight. I gotta run that down. We're getting warm. Yeah, we just give her with what's in it. She'll go. I don't gas is in the crankcase. Okay, used up whatever I had. Let's give her one more. Shoot. Come on. The choke is closed. That would do it. Get up in there. with operating difficulties. <laughs> we're gonna call that a win. The problem is it's not staying tight, but I think we're on the right path. That we're gonna leave on a good note. I am very happy with the, fa the fact that she'll uh, whistle a little bit of smoke out of the gas. And, you know, that's what I'm into. <laughs> All right, so we got her to run, cough, and fart, and do that kind of stuff. I'm kind of happy with that. Let's continue on and uh, see what else we can get done. Probably need that gas tank out of our way, and we'll get that carburetor off and see what it looks like on the inside. Let's see what we need to do for that. Possibly even order a kit because it's not a not a float bowl style one. That and the pull start will probably put our energy into. Let's give her. Let's go in a little bit. This normally there's a, I shouldn't say normally, on a regular piece of power equipment, four stroke, you have a float bowl, take the the main the main nut in the bottom, you take that out, and uh, you have a float that meters how much fuel it maintains in a. Uh, 
vessel, a bowl, you know, the little bowl. These are a little different where it uses a diaphragm. And what it is, what it is, is it can run at any angle. It doesn't matter what direction it is. Kind of like your know, chainsaws. You think of chainsaw, you're going to run in any direction. Let's go uh, count these first. All right, we'll go with a half. All right, so the small one had a half turn. These are the idle and main jets. I'm just trying to get an idea where they started out. Half, both of them are half in, half out, half fast. They should have a little, there should be some more packing in there. It may pop out in a second. Oh, uh, probably a washer and a rubber o-ring. Let's see if we can get the diagram to come. And I do not have a rebuild kit for this, so I'm a little. There's an area to get in. We are going to be gingerly because we might have to use over what we have. It may be stiff as. Usually what happens is they just stiffen up and they don't function anymore. Same is true for your little weed whacker carburetors. It's like half released from one side and half released from the other. Let's see who wants to play. Yeah. We're almost there. All right. Then there's your uh, needle and seat and it pushes on this diaphragm. And allow so much fuel. That actually is pliable. That's nice. Good. We didn't put any holes in it. <laughs> and this whole setup looks like it has a screw right there. I'm gonna grab a tinier screwdriver. It's got a pin that goes through that holds it in place. Where would it go? There we go. It's going right through there. Allow us to access the needle and seat, which is a very common area to get clogged up to. I'm, I'm psyched to see that that the thing is, this is so old that it ran before ethanol fuel, so it looks like it just kind of left oil behind as a deposit. Everything that's in here is, is like an oil, the two stroke oil. Come on. Of that across the room. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Right, the spring. And then we want that if it decides to come out. Come to me. Come on. It's like right there. I know you can't see it. So it happens you cut your fingernails. As a mechanic, you never cut your fingernails. <laughs> so that is a hard plastic tip. It probably has, it may have a seat down inside there that is, uh, Possibly rubber, possibly not. Uh, anything else we could take out of it? I want to go soak it in the cleaner. We're going to let it do its thing. We're going to leave that diaphragm definitely out of the picture. There's not much to this. Yeah, I'm going to take a pick. And actually, you might go to get it with these. These are going to be O rings. Come on. Yeah, they're pretty brittle. Let's see if we can find a better set of those. Yeah, they're pretty much little, little tiny rock tires. <laughs> right, let's go throw that in the cleaner and we can go look at the pull start and see if we can record that thing. That weird noise in the background is the ultrasonic cleaner. That and the ceiling fan that's up above you going vroom, vroom, vroom. Hopefully, it's just a missing rope. But it might have a broken spring. It's 
real gooey too. Anyway, so the rope's going in that way you want to pull. So it needs to wind this way and re return. Might be okay. Actually, I'm going to go over to the parts wash and do the same because it's, it's gummy. So it gets on up. There's a, a big spring wound up behind here. And uh, I'm sure 50, 60 years of gunk has gone in behind there. And it's kind of draggy feeling. Let's see if we can free that up. One thing that concerns me is all those marks around the outside that was hitting the starter cup. All this. And I didn't show you guys yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show you. But the flywheel has a crack in it. Where the key is, I don't know if I did it. Running it with the drill and, and loosening and tightening kind of thing or if it was already a pre-existing condition when you turn the flywheel I mean it doesn't run perpendicular it's got a little bit of a, a, a rack to it and so the cup is gonna have a little bit of a rack to it so uh, this is all old because we didn't even run it so it might have been you always try to find what the thing died for why it wasn't being used why they couldn't get it going possibly that might have been what the issue was I ran some fluid through there it seems like it spins a little better what it did you'll know when you have a broken spring you, you go and try and wind it like you are now it'll go about about a turn and a half or two and all of a sudden you'll hear on the inside you'll burn what it is under here that coiled up spring on the end there's a tab that's kind of bent over on one side and a tab that's bent over on the other side the difference between the two sometimes it even sticks out see if we can see it I don't see it uh, that little tab breaks off the end of it and what happens is it catches a little bit whatever's left of the, the tang that broke off, but then it, it releases and kind of spins itself around. This one seems like it's holding pretty good. So let's go see if we can go dig up a pull starter. And we're gonna go wind that onto there. Yank our crank. So this one has a little cutaway in it, and that allows you, when the rope is still on it, to change the tensioning of it ourselves a generic pull start let's go heat that end up and kind of roll that to a point it doesn't undo itself uh, if it didn't have it all right so we want to it's gonna pull that way we want to retract so we need to go this direction Is that correct am I doing it right Blonde moment there. I'm not sure I say white hair. And we're gonna go spin that backwards a couple of turns. Get fairly close to where that lines up. I'm just gonna clamp it. melts it together locks it that knot and that rope might be too big it might interfere but we're gonna go pull that back and should have a little hiding spot for it to tuck into 
That might interfere though. We might have to go with a smaller rope. I'm gonna release it and let's just let it draw itself back in. If it doesn't have enough tension like it does, what you can do is you can pull the rope out. You give yourself some slack. Take the rope, feed it into that groove and literally spin it around a couple more turns. Let's just try one first. So now it's one revolution tighter again. Let's see if that's enough to retract it all the way. There we go. So we're gonna leave it like that. I'm not quite sure if we're gonna clear that cover. Let's go grab the cover and make sure that's not gonna interfere with anything. And you know, something else too, that's why those bolts are on there. So if something was interfering or, or it's a mix of parts and maybe this is not off of this setup, I don't know. I bet you that's what it is. I bet you this is even off of like a old Tecumseh or something. The original one broke maybe. And that's why it's rubbing and they shimmed it out with bolts. Let's go see what we get. That's probably why, the, why it's broke too. Yeah, it's not going to hit anything. But let's go see if that will fit in our the cup that's on there. Yeah, we got something mixed match of parts here. I was didn't think that was factory <laughs> doing that. But. All right, throw that in the parts washer. We'll go clean that up a little bit. We'll go back to the motor. Just kind of dry fit this thing and see how it looks. We got the cover cleaned, kind of, sort of. I'm not going to read the ID tag. But I want to get this off of the fins first and clean out the crap that's behind that. Let's go see if we have any old mouse parties from the 60s. Mickey and the gang. We gotta tie one on. Yeah. Actually, not too bad. I'm gonna take an air gun. I just wanna blow out these fins because, again, the, this is the fan, pumps the air out across the shroud, cools it, and exits out this side. But if that stuff is clogged up, you don't have the cooling you should. I'm take a second to clean up some of the critter crackers. Might just improve a little bit of the smell of my surrounding areas. As I came over with the pull start, and I have a feeling that this starter cup probably came off of whatever engine had this pull start on it. And again, it kind of looks like a Tecumseh, possibly. And that's why I, I was wondering why, like, this didn't paint or lock into the flywheel any. It was just kind of holding on to pressure of the nut to hold it. So. I suspect we are probably be going to have an issue with it. And we have, may have to go do some shopping for components at some point. But we're going to move ahead with what it came with. And we'll get that. Let's get a little rubber bumper to get over. Work that back into place. And if we were to go all the way in, yeah, you can't even go in that far. That's why they stood it off with those. Well, I'm going to reassemble it with what it had, and we'll wing it for now. But I have a feeling we're going to have to possibly try to source a, another flywheel. The flywheel also had a, uh, I keep calling it. There was a chunk taken out of it right there. You can tell it's old. So again, somebody's been in there before us, uh, having a little persuasion, having their way with it. Just yeah, so give that a little. That was pretty good. Whether it holds up or not, we'll find out. All right, let's go grab that carb out of there. Go assemble that, put that back together, and see if we can make brum brum noises. Get out of the tank. Let's go. I blew it out already. Just want to get down inside that needle and seat area. Come on, get in there. I brought my drill home. 
for home improvement projects. I gotta get another set for here. Actually, yeah, I should probably get a new set for here and put the old drills home. Oh, they have nothing there. That's pretty clean. Alright, so that's gonna go back in. And then we need a spring. Get in there without launching. Yeah. Now we need you to go. That little dent locks into the spring. It's pretty much the exact same setup. Those little tiny carburetors, like I said. Pretty much the exact same thing. Where is the, which side is the hole? There's the hole. I'm just going to blow through that port. Since the valve is working. And then what it does, it uses that little nub in the center as it needs more and less fuel. It opens and closes that valve. Same as a float bowl, just there's no air space in it. So like I said, so it can, it can move in any position. And the witness mark, mark looks like that went just like that. Does it feel like in here? Throw those five back in. Tiltson, Tiltson curb. I think I have uh, an AH47 motor engine that runs on the same style carburetor. I oh, actually I have. One that has a float ball on it, and I have one that has this style. Had a wonder if they figure, because it's a suitcase type of thing, that if you would fold up the scooter, that possibly you would lay it on its side, maybe. So maybe that's why the one with this style carburetor. You imagine going through the airport <laughs> with your gas gas tank full of fuel scooter. Uh -uh. Yes, I'm using the same O-rings over because. I'm gonna run them in till. Uh, did I do that backwards? That does not feel. One goes much deeper. Uh oh. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I thought the low screw had the smaller head on it. Let's go try that. That feels more, more normal. And then until it touches, it come off half a turn. Half. I'm going to go half and a little bit more. On a two-stroke, I, I, you kind of want to sneak up on the half and just a hair more. You want to sneak up on it. You run it a little bit more rich, and it'll stay running. When you run too lean, it'll just die right out. This engine has a reed valve on it, too. A reed valve is a uh, check valve. Allows fuel to go just one direction, and that's after the car uh, between the cylinder and the carburetor, between the engine and the carburetor. So this mounts up to that surface. This is a reed valve out here. Air fuel comes in. Am I on the right side? Yeah. 
air fuel goes into the engine the little valves inside here open up allow air fuel to go through and then when the piston comes back up and puts pressure the other direction it kind of closes those valve out so it just doesn't push backwards through it i'll show you in a second if you can see it you know the point with it would be that little plate right right there see it now there's a couple of them in there uh, those are reed valves looks like it's got some crap in there too huh and you would access that by unbolting this and taking it apart we're gonna leave it alone for now see if it works that car's bolted back on let's go pull up a fuel line and hopefully it takes fuel and stops we are right up to the pliers right there Well, you say we give her. Let me go set you up a little bit better. You can see. Yeah, what do you think, choke? Yeah, we'll give her. We'll give her like just shy of pull choke. We need a spark plug before we do anything. That might be a good addition to the party. Uh -oh. We'll lose it. <laughs> Here's two explosions. Hands wet, let's go. No choke. And no choke. <laughs> we can guess. Gonna clear some air out. Let's see um, if we can go work about that clutch and get a belt on it. Get that clutch off. You think it's gonna be this way or this way? <laughs> Sometimes they run it opposite. <laughs> that way. So that should be able, it needs to expand and contract on itself. Let's go pop it over on the bench. It might have a C-clip or something we could take apart and kind of clean some, some stuff on it. If not, we'll just take a wire wheel to the, the inside of that. It doesn't have a C-clip. It's got like some kind of weird... It goes around a couple of times. I cannot see it very well. I forgot what the beginning is. We get that to go up and over. Try not to destroy it. There we go. Ball bearings come flying out of it everywhere. wriggle a clutch to that maybe this doesn't um, shrink down it kind of looked like it did though didn't it I 
What's that? <laughs> Just supposed to do that? We gotta turn that fan off. Yeah. It looks like at one time these two were separate and it would slide this part would slide in and out. Let's go clean up with the wire wheel the best we can. This groove that's down inside here and see if possibly you know, I, I, I will clean this up too. See if we can kind of tap this to go go move a little bit. I have a feeling that it, it is supposed to. You know, that's just a regular to engage, but then this part is a CVT. I'm still going with that because <laughs> it makes that noise. Got a name on it. That's welded on. And that's got a flange out. I don't see us taking that apart. I don't know if I would want to. See, absolutely, absolutely have to. I would think it's probably got like shot peen in there and when it spins out it draws it in let's um i'm gonna shoot some lube around there and and try to work it see if i can get it to to travel down and get back the other way i think it's just kind of hung up on this lip right here That gap looks smaller. <laughs> Got a way to support it, get it like a fork, maybe some wood. Well, I do believe we have success. So I think it's, you know, that's starting out to move. And then as it spins up, whatever's in here, I would think there's probably beads of some sort that push out on a cone and draw this half in to tighten up. And then the belt will come higher in the groove and give you a faster top speed. And to make it go, it's just brake shoes. These brake shoes, as the engine spins up, these shoes come out and make contact with this surface. I still have to clean this up yet. But makes contact with this surface and gets the whole assembly turned so that when you stop at an idle and you're just sitting here, these brake shoes go in and are not trying to spin the back tire at all till you rev it up a little bit. Centrifugal clutch and half of a CVT. <laughs>
I doubt that tire is going to take air. <laughs> What's your thoughts? See if we can put a little bit of air in there just so it's not going to rub against the chain when we fire it up. I could actually stick my finger through the tire. But it might have a tube in it just enough to you know, put like two pounds in it to puff it up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you get power to the back wheel. Let's go fire it up again. Let's try it with no choke. And grab a little bit of throttle. Slow it down a little. And the inner clutch, I'm trying to get it to stop from sliding. We can go push in the standing, we'll fire it back up. Uh, yeah, that we just put the back tire on the ground, give a little bit of drag. See, like doing, I was trying to show the how the setup, how it was working. Yeah. <laughs> Could probably try hitting the brakes too. Exactly what it's supposed to. <laughs> Needs to be around a little bit. That's all. How cool is that? First time that thing's been run 40, 50 years. Yeehaw! Sounds good too. It's clearing up. It's uh, not breaking them up as much. Still puffing out, you know, a decent amount of smoke as you can tell. But uh, yeah, it's running awesome. Burning off some crap that's on it. And it's got a fan that blows across, kind of blows across the cylinder head. Nice, nice. Where we put it, the only thing we put in with so far was the pull start. Let me go out, turn the fan on to get air this place out a little bit. Well, guys, how cool was that? We got to the point where uh, the drivetrain is functioning like it should. Uh, we still have you know, a bunch of stuff to do. The brake cable's no good, throttle cable's no good, tires are beat, gas tank needs to be taken care of, and we got to clean up all the pivot points so that we can get it to fold back on itself and turn itself back into a suitcase. Also, we could check for power coming in that power lead, see if we have power for the tail light and uh, a headlight, uh, which I think it's supposed to have. 
Well, we, you know, if it has a taillight, I would think it would have a headlight. I think we could also probably register this as a moped. It's 49 cc's and it's single speed. Uh, I'll look into my local laws and see what it, uh, they call it out. Worst case, you can probably call it as a scooter. But I think it'll fall into moped, and it's like six bucks a year to go register a moped in New Hampshire. I think it's awesome. <laughs> all right guys with that i'm gonna go sign off and thank you all for kind of hanging out with me and uh having fun resting on wrenching on old rusty junk i enjoy it hope you guys do too see ya and another good news a big old hunk of it's missing out of the side of the suitcase that i was worried about it looks like dan had found it where the scooter was back in its pile the missing link so that's cool we'll be able to probably fiberglass the back of that put all that pieces back together and have the original cover on there awesome